Well, good day, my icon friends and family. I hope everyone is doing just fine. Today, we are going to do kind of, well, sort of a rerun, I guess we should call it. Um, usually, icon clients keep their vehicles for a long, long time and they don't come back up on the market. Nifty little fact, trivia bit. About 35% of our clients have two or more, which I certainly never expected, but I'm certainly honored by. But occasionally, we will have vehicles come back up on the market. And when it's one of our one-off projects from the derelict and reformer line, well, that's just extra exciting because one of the rules of that department, self-imposed, we never repeat a project. So if you like one and you see it and it's built for someone, that sucks. If you like one, you see it and it comes back up on the market, then that's a unique opportunity to get it. And that's what we have here. This was completed late in 2018 for a wonderful client who's had several icon. This is a Kaiser Wagoneer, so early Jeep. Sexier front end, better build quality than the Wagoneer products sold up until about 1990. Just stronger and simpler, cleaner, more pure lines, at least in my opinion again. And uh, this truck is just one of our all-time favorites, and it definitely seems to have a significant following of on its own right. Uh, the client was actually a bit frustrated over the years how many people knew it and wanted to stop and talk about it. But uh, here it is. And uh, it's still, we haven't serviced it or detailed it yet. I'm showing it to you as it came back to us which is a good indication of what lovely care uh, Mr. L has always taken with his vehicles. So it is used, it is not abused. Uh, it has just under 6,400 miles on it since we completed it. And I'm just gonna do this short section of the video intro to show you its current condition. Before we deliver it, we're gonna comb through it, address any service needs, do some touch up on some small nicks in the paint uh, and then it should be ready to go here in the next week or two so stay tuned at the end of this short intro I'm going to rebroadcast the original build video which goes into far deeper detail on all the nifty little gizmos and widgets but basically picture the clean evolved aesthetics of the original Kaiser series Wagoneer and then we did a one-off chassis with Art Morrison featuring of course coilover suspension all the way around with tunable sway bars we did the General Motors E-Rod LS3 we paired that to the GM automatic with overdrive and that in turn sends power through to the Atlas to twin stick shift on the fly part-time four-wheel drive transfer case. Axles are from our buddies at Dynatrack. We've got a Pro Rock 44 in the front and a Pro Rock High Pinion Dana 60 Monster in the rear. We are running the uh, Sport Brakes Hydro Boosted. So tons and tons of brake power there. These are the Brembo brakes, not the earlier ones by StopTech. We have a very, very clean cosmetic design language for this. We did do the 3M wood faux veneer inserts, and that's the latest and greatest version, so should have good longevity, and it's easy to replace if not. Uh, all of the exterior trim, most of it's stock. We did kind of pick and choose our favorites between different years and versions and did some very moderate customization on that. We've got the beautiful Kaiser front end, which is just so distinct. And we also have the Kaiser dash, which I think is just killer. It's got our Raymond Lowy simplicity thing going on. And when I did my design work to handle the modifications such as the AC, the electronic gauges, the modern audio and all that. I did it very much in keeping with the original design language. So all of the mods are very subtle. So the gauges, 
they look stock, but they now have uh, all circuit board driven hardware behind them to keep the original sweet speedo. We did do a uh, basically an inverter that takes vehicle speed electronic signal and converts it for a stepper motor for the old style cable gauge. So at low speed, it's a little jerky up to like 20 miles an hour, but this is no big deal. For the dash controls, you've got lights, wiper, volume, which goes to our digital sound process, audio system, very nice. Very clean and simple audio system on this truck. It is amplified. We have no bass box or anything, but it, it gets the job done. It sounds nice and clean. Then you've got the old school factory lighter, and then dead center in the dash, we've got the modern climate control, so fan, vent, and temp. All of those knobs are CNC'd and then chromed. They have the indication function on the escutcheon bezels, and those are all modern switches for our modern harness. Uh, all new wiring stem to stern on this, of course. Other dash details, the AC vents. Uh, I designed those to like reference the Kaiser grill with these vertical slots. So those also are CNC and aluminum and then painted, so they just kind of disappear with the dash. You have the original bank of idiot lights dead center under the dash. We have added to those with the four wheel drive function and I don't remember what the other one does, but it's in a long video. Knoll Textiles, outdoor furniture, very high durability UV and bacterial rating with a specialty coating that protects it from stains. As you can see, it remains in great shape. We did final, not leather to keep the old school vibe. Power windows and not, we kept it analog, interesting tidbit. It's only two rotations from all the way down to all the way up, and it just seemed to be appropriate for this sort of like beach ride vibe, keep that stuff all analog. Headliners an upgrade over original, but still suspended by the original rods. Copious amounts of Dynamat, very nice high quality paint job and a lovely blue, custom not stock. BFG ATs, one off machined, old school aluminum wheels. Custom rear view mirrors, not stock to the application. Well, that's pretty much it. So stay tuned and watch the full length video if you want to do a deep dive. Otherwise, reach out if you want to own it. I will be publishing it on the website, although I'm going to Michigan to visit some friends. So it may be live on YouTube before it is live on the Icon website. All right. Thanks again for your time. Be well, be good to others, and we'll see you on the next one. So back in the 50s, there was a cool little car company called Kaiser Frazier, and they built some really nifty stuff. Look up the Kaiser Dragon if you have nothing else better to do. I'd like to build a derelict one of those one day. But anyway, Mr. Frazier bailed, and Mr. Kaiser was left on his own, and he realized it was going to be tough going. You know, it was the time where the big conglomerates, the big three, were really starting to kick some ass. And he decided the only way he might be able to survive is to pair up with another little guy. So he started trying to create a merger between Willis Overland. He succeeded, and the new company was called Willis Motors. One of the first things that that team did was to have the wisdom to continue working with the legendary designer, Brooks Stevens. So Mr. Stevens designed this magical vehicle. Now, a cool thing about this is that this Wagoneer model was made all the way from, I think it was 1963 up until 1991 with these same style themes consistently all the way through. Now, like most car companies, as the years went by, the economists got stronger, the pencil pushers had more control, and they just slowly started chipping away. So when one of my favorite customers that we've built several vehicles for, when he came to me and said, hey, 
I want something for this particular beach house. And he explained the locale, showed me the property. I started really getting my head around it. And a Wagoneer was just perfect. It's just Americana at its finest, right? So we settled immediately on a blue Wagoneer. Now, I've had a little bit of experience with the later Wagoneers, like the, the ones from the 80s up to like 90, 91. And I know they've got like this huge cult following and no one wants to hear anything but that they're perfect and gorgeous. I think they're gorgeous, but man, do they have a lot of plastic in them. And the chassis is just loose as spaghetti. So when we set out to do this, I said, you know what, the one we need to find is the Kaiser era example because not only are they built much stronger and thicker metal and no plastic really, well, very little, but they have that lovely front grille that's that hunched, moving forward, really masculine and aggressive design. So that's what we did. So we tracked down this vehicle, we found it on good old Craigslist, we brought it in and we had at it. So as always, we worked with our buddy Art Morrison. So the chassis is a one of one, it's two by four, into two by six mandrel vent the hard way rails. Beautifully welded. And then it's epoxy powdered and then black sealer coat, military spec two powder coat finish. Suspension on this one robbed a lot of the architecture and experience from our Bronco. So we're running a radius arm front and a triangulated four link rear. We're running our beloved Fox Racing shocks and Eibach coils. For steering, we're running a PSC power steering box. For powertrain, we're running the lovely LS3, putting out about 420 horse. That is sending power through to the 4L85E, three quarter ton automatic, which in turn sends its power on to the Atlas to twin stick, shift on the fly, part-time four wheel drive transfer case. That mouthful never ceases to crack me up. Uh, 1310 U-joints, overbuilt shafts, carrying on to the axles by Dynatrack. So we're running a Dana 60 Pro Rock high pinion in the rear and a Dana 44 high pinion in the front. On the outer ends of those axles, you will find the Icon Sport brakes by Brembo, and those are hydro boosted. Then the wheels. You have the Icon 6061 CNC billet wheels. Those are finished in the body color in an effort to minimize their size. The hubcaps are eBay scores, new old stock, old cheap hubcaps, which is perfect for it. On the exterior, any mods that we did were super, super subtle. So the body color is correct for the era, but totally not correct for the truck. That's kind of part of the fun to me because I love German automotive colors from the 50s. And there's something about the sort of smoky pastel color tone of that era that just works so well in such a range of vehicles. So that's where we started and then we blended, added a dip of this and a dab of that to come up with this color and we're happy with it. The wood paneling, although correct in general style for the year, is not the right wood for the year. We just picked what we liked. Same with bright work and trim. Some of it is bits and pieces from different years. The roof rack is original to the vehicle, so we simply restored that put it right back up there. We didn't do the rear spoiler. I was kind of thinking maybe we should have. You know what I'm talking about where they have a little wind deflector in the back? What do y'all think? Should we put one on there? Hmm. Front grille, dead stock, gorgeous. Just higher quality, uh, bright stainless polishing, chrome work than stock. This is all triple blue chrome, as they call it. Quite costly to do these days here in California, especially. In the front, we simply removed the Jeep logo and replaced it with the Spun Pewter Icon Lizard. So it's branded Icon in the front, very subtly. In the front fenders, the front fender badges, again, appear stock where it says Jeep and has the displacement, but they are not stock. Being that we changed the displacement, it's one of those things that would have just driven me crazy if we inaccurately represented the displacement. So we CNC those in-house uh, to reference the 6.2 liter. Rear badges are stock, four-wheel drive badges or badge on the fender is correct. I thought we were missing one, but I found out stock, they only have one and only on one side of the vehicle. What's up with that? Whatever, kind of fun. I'm not gonna question Brooks Stevens. 
He's done so many designs that I love. He did, did you see the Willis Overland two-door wagon that we did years ago? Which reportedly, Raymond Lowy, another hero of mine in design, played a part in as well. Beautiful, beautiful shapes. So let me think, that's it on the exterior. I covered the mechanical. Obviously the electrical system is all in-house built by Mark Wallen, our electrical engineer, using all aerospace military grade connectors, cross-link wire, solder connection points and butts, um, all top quality stuff. All the switches are modern units. The gauges appear to be stock, but are all modern VDO circuit driven units in the background. And that was all done custom for us by our buddy Shannon at Redline. The fascia on the instrument panel stock was plastic, and you know how much I love plastic. So we CNC'd that and anodized it and went through a hell of a lot of work considering literally I had to tap on it to make sure it wasn't the plastic one because it looks almost identical, but whatever. Other than that, we left the idiot lights and the very simplistic fuel and temp instrumentation. In the middle of the dash, under dash, there's two idiot lights stock. We scored two more housings and then had all the faces done and you know, re-chromed and restored the bodies. So now we have check engine light, which obviously they weren't really worried about in the 60s. Four wheel drive function, parking brake, and also reminds you when your tailgate is down. Steering wheel, absolute money pit. We had to make the casting to recast this wheel, but it's such a cool design, I just didn't have the heart to change it. Steering column is a modern I did it custom for the vehicle, painted in the body color. We're running column shift. You may notice that the column shift handle, as well as hazards, turn signal, and tilt are not normal. What we did was the dash switches stock were like three or four different designs and three or four different colors or plastic finishes. We simply picked the one that we liked the most. We re-engineered it, designed it, CNC'd it. So now they're all chromed metal and it's the same design language from the window regular through the column stuff to all the dash switches. Stuff like that, that really makes me a happy guy. Um, also the escutions for all those dash switches now are CNC'd to mark their function indication. So you've got fan, temp, vent, headlights, wipers, and audio control. Audio control, rotary, off, click, on, click, excites the amp, and the Bluetooth function. So the audio is controlled simply through your smartphone. So no more head units that are out of date in a year, just totally invisible. You don't have any gacky visual interface to kind of jump the shark with the beautiful aesthetic of something like this. And really good audio quality thanks to the JL audio amplifier and the focal speakers. The speakers are integrated into the cargo panels. You'll notice that the grills for those speakers uses the same material as found on the dash where the stock AM radio would have been. In dash AC now, thanks to vintage air. The vents for the AC system were kind of fun and we were literally, I was sitting in the truck with Johnny and a couple of the guys on the team like, where are we gonna put them? What are we gonna do? So. The stock dash had two ashtrays in the middle. So they had this kind of cool architectural framing around them. So we simply took inspiration from that ashtray bezel, did it in CAD, modeled it up, and then we took inspiration from the slotted Kaiser vertical grill. That became the vent outs, and to da, you have a nice AC vent setup. We didn't um, do anything shiny with those because again I, the whole theme of the vehicle is very retro and under the radar so those are simply painted body color and to me they, they do a nice job of just not interrupting the, the flow of the dash. Center glove box pretty funky but actually makes a hell of a lot of sense so it's a lot easier for the driver to reach and we're able to keep that in most of its depth. Door panels again great design but kind of a cheap 60s execution. There is simply dielectric stamped vinyl on a chunk of cardboard. Fancy, eh? So I like the shapes and the, the lines and the quilting. So what we did again is take inspiration from those details, but then 
actually machine the metal details and then chrome them and polish them up. We lasered new fiberboard, marine board for the substrate, then we wrapped it in high-end vinyl and high-end woven fabric. We didn't do leather again because it is a beach truck. Leather would have just gone to hell in a hurry. So this vinyl's way more durable. The vinyl as well as the fabric both come from Knoll, K-N-O-L-L. -L. They're mostly known for the high-end residential and um, like office interior design and stuff like that. But uh, really good stuff. And the, the woven part of it, that came from their outdoor patio furniture line. So even more durable. So very, very good. For the seat patterns, again, we kept the quilted patterns and the basic layout very true to stock. And the cargo area, made it just a wee bit fancier. So the cargo panels are, are fully upholstered and foamed. And then obviously in the doors and the roof and the floors and the tailgate and the quarters, the firewall is all Dynapad and Dynamatic, so it keeps it super nice and quiet in here. Headliner looks to be stock, but frankly, I don't even know where it's from. I think we just pulled it out of a sample book and we liked it. And I've used this material before, it's super durable. What else? Uh, we added a power rear window, which this truck did not have, but it seemed like a good convenient thing to go ahead and add while we're at it. We added low output LED ambient lighting. Um, something I'm starting to play with, it looks cool at night. Cargo area, the mats are removable. Then you have the polyurea. So if you're hauling dirty stuff or a lot of beach gear, you can save yourself from having to do a bunch of sand vacuuming. I just wanted to take the time to really get nitty gritty on this. I knew from the first time I posted process photos on Instagram that you guys were right there with me and uh, being really excited about this project. your patience. I hope I got into the weeds enough to be interesting but not too boring. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Old school, pick up the phone, 818-280-3333. The website, of course, is icon4x4. Instagram, icon4x4. Twitter, icon design. Facebook, icon4x4, or just little of me, Jonathan Ward. Thanks again for your time. I really appreciate your support for icon. Be well.